Hey that fools. Big T here and I'm back with another video and I'm just going to share my Nintendo fanboy anxiety with you. <laughs> yeah, um so over the last few years a lot of things has changed when it comes to Nintendo and I kind of just want to talk about that and uh my biggest fears going forward. Um recently I was just thinking about like um because I've talked about it a few times in videos, just thinking about um, my worries uh, with changes with the Nintendo and my anxiety as far as that goes. Um, and uh, the Switch has brought some of that out uh, even more. And uh, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people may hear me talk about these things and think, or not realize that I feel like they're linked, even though they very well, very well may not be and may just all be in my head so now my anxiety have to do with what I feel like you know could be the beginning of the end <laughs> and I'm being a little facetious there and I'm uh, most likely uh, over you know exaggerating uh, a bit when it comes to this but two things that I feel are major issues uh, this generation, basically the Switch generation with Nintendo, are um, that I see as big changes are the value to the customer, um, as well as the quality of the hardware and software. So, first, value to the customer. One of the major things I harp on many times, uh, to the point I'm sure people are annoyed and don't want to hear about it anymore from me, <laughs> is... Uh, you know, Nintendo, when it comes to like uh, the port situation and this overall pricing on the Switch. Uh, obviously, one of the problems with not just me, but a lot of people is that I feel like we're they're doing a little price gouging here and there uh, when it comes to some hardware. Uh, and especially because of the quality, which we'll get into, uh, but also like ports and how uh, they're charging more etc and whatnot than they did on the Wii U from the original cost so I won't get into all that I've made enough videos on that but those, that's one of the 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 threads I see um, and obviously the quality is when it comes to something like the joy cons uh, specifically but not just the joy cons also the build of the switch itself uh, many people including myself have cracking on their switches and uh, that's ridiculous. It's, it's nothing we're doing. We're just playing the system. And eventually, I guess it gets too hot. And so there's cracking around the ventilation and whatnot. And it's happening to a lot of people. And some people have even melting. Luckily, I don't have that. To where their uh, heat sinks and whatnot are melting through their system. Um, that's a little bit rarer. But that does happen. But specifically the Joy-Con, because I was very excited uh, during uh, Nintendo's initial uh, presentation when it came to the Switch about the Joy-Cons and, you know, the HD rumble and, you know, the pointing, uh, the the uh, uh, gyro and all that stuff. Uh, I was very excited to see Nintendo continue to do that because a lot of people speculated that they might drop that after the Wii and Wii U. They might not do the whole gyro thing anymore, not, not care. And it seemed like it was a big emphasis on the pre presentation. And I was like, oh, great. They are going to continue to do that. I'm very excited for that. And so I use my Joy-Cons, unlike a lot of people who probably just bought a Pro Controller and called it a day because the Joy-Cons were too small. And um, I use my Joy-Cons, especially, um, you know, with games that take a long time to beat, like Breath of the Wild. I use my Joy Cons exclusively, split Joy Cons for the entire 200 and I don't know 70 hours I played that game, um, among many other games. So I put, you know, wear on this on the uh, Joy Cons, which is is normal wear uh, for any gamer who plays their console. You know, so um, I didn't realize that the, the Joy Cons, the specifically the the uh, the uh, analog sticks would not hold up. They start giving you what's known as uh, 
uh, uh, what do you call it, Joy-Con drift, where they are registering movements when you're not even touching them. So, huge problem. And it just really put a damper on, uh, you know, the innovation for me that, that came along with the Joy-Con. It put a damper on it because I had to deal with this. I had to deal with this issue of Joy-Con drift when I use my Joy-Cons. It just, it just made me not even want to use them. And so, that is something that is not typical with uh, with the Nintendo. It's very atypical for them to have hardware issues, especially issues that are pretty much design flaws, you know, uh, designed in and, you know, unless they completely change the design of the, the, uh, joysticks, then it's going to continue to have, be a problem. So it's things like that the value to the customer, um, quality of the hardware that I saw slip this generation that I'd never seen before. And this is from someone who has had a Nintendo system from the beginning. Um, so it's very disheartening to see this, uh, and then you add to it, you know, the, the losses to the company, obviously we lost the WADA, which was a huge, um, you know, deficit that will never be overcome. Um, he's a transcending type of person, uh, from all accounts from anybody who's, who knew him personally, and just, you could just feel it as a you know, a core Nintendo fan, a hardcore Nintendo fan, what he meant to the company and what he meant to players. You know, that's just not something that happens with any company where people endear themselves with the CEO or, you know, or something like that, or, uh, even the owner or something like that. People were endeared to his presence. And his presence left a huge gate. And, you know, the hearts of Nintendo fans and just the culture of Nintendo, I think. And I think it led to some of these deficiencies. Um, on the hardware side, maybe not as much on the hardware side. Um, but I feel like even that. But certainly on the value to the customer side, I think. I mean, here's a guy who took a pay cut when, you know, devices that he spearheaded were not doing well. Uh, being the... The 3DS to some degree, and certainly the uh, Wii U. He took a pay cut. He did not fire people. It was his philosophy to not do that. He understood the value of the people that he hired, you know. Um, and so he took a cut. And that's the kind of stuff that you don't see anywhere, ever. Uh, nobody takes a pay cuts. They cut, you know, they cut staff. That's how most of these big wigs do it. And... That was a change, you know, that was a, a game changer to me uh, of realizing what type of dude this guy was. So, you have a huge loss there. And then you had, you know, Reggie. Now, I'm, an, I'm a long-term Nintendo fan. So, Reggie was not there when I first became a Nintendo fan. Now, that may be the case for a lot of people, but um, uh, I was there with Yamuchi. You know, he was the... Uh, he was the guy. He was the the leader as far as, you know, the company, obviously, but also like the attitude, the leader as far as uh, personality goes. You know, people thought of him as the samurai, the <laughs> no nonsense, hardcore business, Japanese businessman who didn't take crap. And, you know, he pushed the boundaries of business. And, you know, that's the legacy he left. So that's who I knew. When I first started, you know, being a Nintendo fan, along with obviously the developers like Miyamoto uh, and, you know, designers and Koji Kondo, um, as far as music goes. So these were the guys I was paying attention to. And so when Reggie stepped in, when at a time that I thought Nintendo really needed some attitude, uh, which was the GameCube, because I remember seeing the GameCube and I was like, the first time I saw it at Space World. Um, I was on the internet buffering and buffering and trying to get photos as soon as I could get them during dial up days, the dial up uh, internet. Um, I first saw it, I was like, this is not going to do well because it was a, you know, you know, the jokes, purple lunchbox with a handle, you know, that kind of stuff. And, um, that's when Nintendo's, I mean, it started happening during the N64, but it really kicked in during the GameCube of quote unquote Nintendo's kitty 
this kitty that nature or whatever. And so when Rayu stepped in with that attitude, kicking ass and taking names, that was a much needed injection uh, personality into Nintendo at the time. And many people were getting super excited about it. You know, of course, a lot of people love Reggie up until his, you know, res- resignation. Um, and even after, Nintendo fans endeared themselves to him. But that was I, that was a big moment um, for Nintendo, and just you know, like I said, the attitude of the company it was huge. So a lot of people really endeared themselves to him, and so you have what I call the Triforce in Miyamoto. Reggie and uh, Iwata and we've lost two pieces of that Triforce two major pieces of that Triforce and we have Miyamoto or yeah Miyamoto left and so my anxiety kicks in even more because I know he's not the youngest guy anymore you know he's he's not gonna be there forever um now I think his philosophy will still stick with Nintendo it's a big part of Nintendo a lot of designers the younger folks came up under him and they learned under him but you, you're never going to be able to just outright replace what a person does and brings um, but I think all his biggest um, attributions to the company are there and he, I don't believe that he's got anything mind-blowing left in him which he doesn't really need because he's done so many amazing things for not only Nintendo but gaming so, um, as far as his imprint goes, is that as far as that goes, it's in a lot of the younger designers and developers, um, and he'll be, you know, he'll be a steward to them. He'll be a um, mentor to them, uh, probably even after he ret- he retires. And so, that's another thing. Like he's not probably not that far from retirement. I mean, I know he still loves what he does, uh, but you know. He could be gone pretty soon within the next few years as well, if not sooner. So my anxiety, my Nintendo fanboy anxiety is through the roof, <laughs> you know, because I've already seen these things that I felt like were not are not very Nintendo going on with Switch. And I'm sure some people will argue against me. And um, that's fine. I think I have valid criticisms here um, and worries. And I'd be willing to argue that with anyone. Uh, but... Um, it's only going to get worse, (laughs) uh, when, if, and when Miyamoto leaves. So yeah, my, I'm just, I just wanted to share (laughs) this with you and get you guys worried as well. (laughs) Um, but you know, uh, Nintendo is, you know, for some people, just gaming is just whatever. It's an, it's a hobby, it's entertainment, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it, it is a serious part of who I am and uh, Nintendo was a big part of that Um, they were a big part of my creative streak my creative side um, my storytelling side a lot of that comes from the the ingenuity of what Nintendo is and what they embody so for me it's not just you know video games or uh, as is, has been said in the past, it's not just plastic to me. It's more than that. So uh, this helps along my anxiety in not so good ways. So yeah, that's that's it. I mean, I don't, I, I can't really end this on a, a, a happy note. <laughs> um, I'm hopeful for the future, uh, but like I said, my anxiety is through the roof when it comes to Nintendo and my fanboyism. So. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you also share that anxiety? Or are you, you know, more optimistic, uh, glass half uh, full, where I'm kind of glass half empty? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Click the notification bell, all that good stuff, so you don't miss any videos, anything going forward, because I don't know what YouTube's doing right now on my channel. They're bugging out. Uh, So make sure you rock along with me by doing that. Uh, Thanks for watching and listening. And now see you for next time. Peace out.